Okay, this is video 23 and I think what I'm going to do in this video is to continue to take um, some code out of my main game loop in the platformer.py file. Um, there's still quite a lot in here and in particular um, at the bottom there's this um, code here that should really be um, so this is the code for checking whether a player can collect coins um, and that should really be in a collection system and also um, some code here for players um, or the, the one main player um, colliding with any enemy so anything that's tagged as dangerous um, and again that should be in its own system uh, if we go into the engine.py file there's a system base class and we already have a camera system um, what I could do is, is create some additional systems in here um, I'll need a few um, so I'll need some kind of um, battle system a collection system and then I won't get around to it in this video but I need um, all this um, checking and updating the player's speed that needs to be in some kind of physics system and then at the top we've got um, key presses so this should be a um, input system and actually I don't need to use this keys anymore because I've got an input manager but um, because I'm going to get rid of this quite soon I'll just leave it as it is so what I could do is I think just to comment this code out so this is the code for colliding with enemies and for collecting coins um, and I'll copy that and paste it into here just so that I've got it um, I've also got these things here so mustard so black I think I've already got in my globals yeah so I can get rid of um, that mustard I'll just um, cut and paste into this globals as well um, but it means that anywhere that I refer to the um, color mustard I do need to to change that um, so this is now globals dot black and there so um, so I can create a collection system And a battle system. And um, just to remind myself of how this works, um, each um, There's basically a check um, method on each system. So the base check just returns true. But you can see that, for example, for the camera system, the check is that the entity has a camera. And then once the check has passed, it then updates that particular entity. Um, So I could define um, uh, 
And so I don't need this. I've got this camera system initialized. I don't need to do anything here. So I'll get rid of that. Um, so the check for the collision system is that, um, sorry, for the collection system is that, um, so what happens when you collect? It's only players that can collect things. So um, entity dot type is equal to player. And because when a player collects a coin, it adds one to their score, they also need a score component. Um, so entity.score um, is not none. And then we need an update entity um, method, which is where we're going to do the check. And so we know, so for example, when we start the update entity method as part of the collection system on a particular entity, at this point we already know that the entity is a player and we already know that it has a score component. So I don't need to do those checks. Um, what I can do is just check. Um, So I'm going to check. Um, I'm going to go through the um, the globals, all the entities in the world, and each one I'll just refer to as other entity. Um, but I do want to check if um, if the entity. If the other entity is not the entity. Because I don't want to, um, I don't want a coin to be able to collect another coin, or a, you know, in a battle system for a player to be able to collide with itself. So I'll probably need to keep checking that, you know, for all we're passing in the entity to this update entity function, and I want to do a kind of um, collision detection with all the other entities. But I just want to check that the when is the entity is not colliding with itself. Or I want to ignore the fact that an entity will always collide with itself. Um, but the other entity, um, if the type needs to be equal to collectible. So if there's another entity in the world that isn't the entity that we're checking against, and that other entity is collectible. Then we want to say, like, if they collide, then um, this stuff. Remove the entity that is collided with, and add one to the to the score of the player. So I'll do the collision bit in a second. So what I want to say is remove, um, it's the other entity that I want to remove. Because remember the entity that we're checking, the main entity here, the entity that we refer to here is the, is the player. So it's not the player we want to remove when we collect say a coin, it's the other entity. But then we do want to say entity add one to the score and we don't need to check it's got a score component remember because we're doing that in the in the check um, but we do need to check whether these things are colliding um, we used to do that um, in the main platformer code just here so creating a player rectangle and then seeing if the collectible entity was colliding with the player. I'm 
So we'll take that out of here. And I think because we're being a bit more flexible now, we can actually say something like, um, if um, entity position dot um, rectangle, so every position has a rectangle, and we can just use the collide um, collide rectangle. And we want to pass in the other entity rectangle. So if the two entities are colliding, we'll remove the other thing, so the coin, and add one to the main entity's score. So if I run that, um, oh. so engine dot, ah, where's that mustard color being referred to? but I got the brackets, uh, messed the brackets up a bit. Okay, so let's try that. There we go. So the game works, but as you can see, we can't collect or interact with the enemies. So we do have a um, collection system here. So I wonder what happens if we um, in our scenes, just say in the main game scene, I'm going to add um, a collection system. And then, I guess as part of the game's um, update method, I also forget what to pass. So the the scene manager itself and the input stream. I just want to say self dot collection system dot update. Let me just see if I need to pass anything else. Um, oh yeah, so I need to pass the screen. And I think that's just because, yeah, that's a bit annoying. I think it's just because the camera system needs the screen. Again, that might be something else I make global later on or, or change the way that works. But for now, I'm quite happy to pass um, Oh, hang on, if I pass the screen, um, it does mean that I then got to pass the screen to um, um, do I need to do that? So yeah, I do. So um
So I'll pass the screen into there. Um, so it means that in my systems, oh, that's right. So update is already passed in the screen. Maybe that will just work. No, so screen is not defined. Um, let's see how it looks for the camera system. So it's self screen and entity to update entity. So I am passing in, so self.update entity, I'm passing in the screen. But it's because in the scene, um, Yeah, there's no mention of the screen here. Um, so, I could just not pass it in and just say that for a system. It's optional, and if I don't pass it in, it's none. So that looks like it works. So the collection system isn't working just yet. Um, it should be. So let me see if it's getting to this point. So just to see if it ever manages to update any entities. Oh yeah, so it is getting there. Um, spot collectible right there we go there we go so I've collected one coin collected two and then we've won so that's working so we've now got a collection system that's working um, 
and this this is more flexible. So whereas what we had before, um, I can delete all of this stuff now. So we can take all of this stuff out of the main game loop, as well as this. But you can see that what we had before, um, for the collection system was very much geared around the one player. So for every entity in the world, if it was collectible, we compared it to that one player's rectangle and then did what we needed to do. Whereas now what we're doing, we're saying for any entity that is of type player that has a score component, we're checking it with every other entity in the world. As long as they're not the same entity and the other entity that it collides with is collectible, check whether they have collided and then remove the other entity and add one to the score component of the main entity. So this is, you know, if we now had a four player game with four players, this collision system would work for any one of the four players as long as they were all tagged with player um, and allow them to collect anything collectible. So this is um, a lot more flexible than what we had previously. Um, so let's do the same with the battle system. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste this. Um, so for the battle system, it's only players that we want to um, collide with enemies. We don't want enemies to be able to hurt each other. Um, but it's the battle component that it needs. And then the same check, so we're checking against all other entities. As long as the other entity isn't the same as the main entity, if they're not the same thing, and the other entity type is, um, I think it's dangerous for any entity that can hurt us, then as long as the two are colliding, um, we just want to do something different here. And that's this stuff. So the entity that's collided with this dangerous other entity, we want to take one off of their lives. And then we just want to say the entity's position has changed. And we need to set the speed. Um, so what we need to do is just for now, let's just say that when we create a new entity, We'll just set the speed to be zero. I'll probably combine some of these later on. You know, like we've got player acceleration and speed and, and direction and things. Um, so this is just a set of, they're not really components. Some of these are just variables at the moment. Um, we can deal with that later. I think for now, um, I'm happy just to have, every entity has a speed of zero and then in the main platformer.py, we can just say, um, get rid of player speed. And then wherever we see um, the player's speed being set, um, we'll just refer to it as player.speed. I think that's it. So again, there's no errors in the code, but um, this system isn't working yet.
so. I think I've missed something as well. Oh, there we go. I just noticed I couldn't jump, but I think it's because I need to set player.speed. Sorry, let me just check that. That's better, so I can still jump. Um, so I just need to actually create in my main game scene. Um, a battle system. And then update it here. So we can collect coins and we can now lose lives by hitting enemies just as we could before. And I won't try it now because lots of the keyboard input is tied to this main game loop here so it would get um, complicated. So this is all just setting the player direction. But what I'm hoping that happens is that if I have um, more than one player then this collection and battle system would work on all of them. Um, but we'll have to try that out another time. Um, we've got a little bit of time. I just wonder whether um, I'm just thinking about this um, type. Um, Actually, I won't do it now, but what I might do in the future is to, to instead of that being type, I might call that uh, tags and have it as a list um, so that I could tag something as collectible and something else, maybe a player and dangerous or something like that. Um, so I won't do that now, but that's something to do in the future, I think. Um, the next thing that would be good to do is to remove, so I've managed to remove, um, let's have a look. So I don't need this enemy system code anymore because I actually have a battle system. Um, this isn't ideal because we're setting the X and Y coordinate of any entity that hits, collides with any enemy to this. We don't necessarily want to do that. What I might do later on is to create, um, I might say entity dot battle dot um, on collide and have entity other entity. And then as part of the battle component I can tell, so I could just call this and every entity would have its own on collide method that maybe says how to react so we could set different x and y coordinates um, I'll leave that there actually to remind me Oops. I'll leave that there to remind me but um, same with collectible I don't want to necessarily add one to the player's score there might be other things like power-ups that you collect that are collectible but um, do things other than just add one to the score. So I might add here something like um, I'd have a proper collectible component with an on collide method that does the same thing. So for coins, it might just say add one to the other entity. For power ups, it might be to store it and then use it. Um, but that's something else to do in the future. 
The other thing is that, um, so I said there's still a few systems, there's a few things in here that I still consider to be systems. One of them is um, this movement is probably a physics system of some sort. Um, but this player input, um, I think that's what I'm going to tackle next. So I need some kind of um, input system um, that allows me to attach um, key presses or keys to every entity and not just the player. So currently this um, input part of the main game loop only works for this one player and I want this to be a bit more flexible. So I think in the game um, scene, I'd add, um, where is it, in here. So I'd add as part of input, um, I'd have uh, an input system that I'd be updating. Uh, I think that's what I'll do in the next video. Thank you.